Hi everyone and welcome to CE Institute. My name is Selena Belial and I am the founder and one of the board approved CE providers here at the school where we teach reflexology. We teach it for the foot, hand, and ear. And right now I'm going to review with you foot reflexology charts in a little bit more detail. We actually have another YouTube video online right now that has about 10,000 views of uh, reflexology charts and why many differ from one another. This is a greater explanation for that information and we were also published in Massage Magazine and this presentation here is a mirror image of some of that article that I wrote for Massage Magazine further explaining why reflexology charts don't always match and how to read a reflexology chart. Now this is a pre-recorded unit in our reflexology home study training for the feet. So we wanted to share this with you so people could get an idea of what we're teaching here at the school. And hopefully if you like it, then you might be able to step up and start practicing reflexology yourself. Keep in mind that reflexology is part of healthcare, and in order to practice healthcare in the United States, you need to be licensed. So make sure that you are a licensed healthcare provider prior to practicing reflexology. Reflexology would fall under the licenses of nurses and massage therapists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and more. All foot reflexology charts show the bottoms of the feet, okay? That's a common characteristic. Um, you wouldn't have a chart that only shows the sides of the feet or the tops of the feet. If you cannot see the soles of the feet in the chart, then it's not a legitimate chart. You must see the soles of the feet. That's where the majority of the reflex points we feel are depicted on foot reflexology. Some charts will also show the tops and sides of the feet in addition to the soles. Um, that's a great chart when you have it. We don't provide that, but there are some licensed images out there that you can purchase that also have the sides and the tops. Um, those are also great depictions. Just make sure you have a legal right to use them if you want to use such a chart. So the sole of the foot, when you have a proper foot reflexology chart, the sole of the foot should be like a map of the human body. And if you look, you have the, at the tips of the toes, you have the head area, and then it follows down by lung, chest, thorax, organ area, um, to the pelvic area, all the way to the bottom of the foot. This is what you're looking for in a commonly accepted reflexology chart. It's going to be that map of the human body. And let me break that down for you a little bit more. I have just cut off the top of the toes with a human body depicted on the left and the right of it. And if you look at the top of the body in the toes, you'll see the brain reflex points in, in the actual big toe. You'll see the eyes underneath the second and third toes. The ears are underneath the third and fourth toes. The sinuses are usually considered to also be in the toes for those reflex points. So to follow that map of the human body from top to bottom, your toes will represent the top of your body, like the top of your, your head, your neck um, area. The human lung and chest area, 
okay, is that thorax area. It's in the ball of the foot, okay? So if you look at a reflexology chart and you place that side by side with a, human, a map of a human body, you're going to see what we have depicted on the right and left upper corners of the screen. That upper thorax, your lung, your chest area is going to be in the upper area of the foot just underneath the head in the ball. And that's where the chest, breast area, lungs, heart are all depicted. The next area of the foot underneath the ball would be like the arch of your foot. Okay, so from the bottom of your ball of the foot, all the way to the top of the heel before you enter the heel of the foot, that would be considered the organ area across that entire arch from the medial foot to the lateral. So your organ area is gonna depict most of your abdominal organs, such as the kidneys and spleen and stomach and gallbladder and liver and so forth. All of these organ, abdominal organ reflex points are considered to be in that arch area of your foot. The lowest portion of your foot, the heel on the sole of your foot, that is usually where pelvic area and lower body reflex points might be depicted. Most charts do not depict things like hips, knees, like they definitely don't depict various muscles such as quadriceps. If somebody has a chart that depicts individual muscles, then that's a really newer chart that was developed by somebody who kind of went their own way. Um, it's not a common characteristic to depict individual muscles on the reflex chart other than the, the heart, which is a cardiovascular um, cardiac muscle there, right? But usually your foot reflexology charts are going to depict organs and systems of the body. And the heel is a little bit more of a nondescript area. Most of your reflex points are going to be from the tips of the toes all the way down to maybe the top of the heel. When you get to that fat pad over the heel, there are not very many reflexology points down in the bottom of the heel. Eunice Ingham, who studied under Dr. Shelby Riley, and Dr. Shelby Riley studied under Dr. Women, William Fitzgerald. So Eunice Ingham comes from that line of the father of foot reflexology, Dr. William Fitzgerald. She's the one that took that zone reflexology, where the foot is just basically broken into five zones, and she's the one that started depicting individual organs on a foot reflexology map chart, like what we see here to the left-hand side. This isn't Eunice's chart, um, but it's similar to her chart. And if you notice in this chart, you're going to see a whole bunch of organ, mainly abdominal organ reflex points, such as the kidneys and gallbladder and spleen. Um, all of these adrenal glands and so forth are individually depicted. This is building on top of the zone reflexology chart. If you look, those depictions of systems and organs are from are mapping the body from top to bottom, okay? And that is fairly customary of what's found in reflexology charts, that sole of the foot is a map of the human body from top to bottom. And we have greater organ depictions within those charts today because of Eunice Ingham. It's estimated that there are over a hundred foot reflexology charts that are in existence and used today. And that's because um, sometimes there's practitioners that felt that the reflex points were in different areas and they created their own chart. There's something called situs inversus where organs are actually reversed in the body. That would create its own chart. Um, there's various reasons why new charts were depicted. Of course, financial reasons exist. If we use someone else's chart, we have to pay for that use. So that's another reason why people have created their own charts um, is because they don't want to have to 
pay to use someone else's. And you might feel if you're creating your own chart that the reflex points are maybe in slightly different areas than what's produced on someone's chart. There's various reasons why there's over 100 different charts. There's some artists out there that will slightly change the charts without reason just to resell them. <laughs> That'll create an illegitimate chart. So it's really important if you're going to practice reflexology that you know what the common similarities are regardless of whatever chart you use to use you you, you choose to use because not all of them will be similar. Um, it would be a copyright violation if they were identical. They're going to have some variations, but it's really important to know what those common similarities are so you can validate, yeah, this is a legitimate chart. These, these reflex points are in the general area that they're supposed to be. So let's review what those general reflex point areas are supposed to look look like, what those reflex point depictions, where, where they're supposed to be geographically located on the foot. First of all, <laughs> I put this, um, I inverted this map of the body <laughs> and put it against the foot reflexology chart to show you exactly what you should not be practicing with, okay? You would never have the map of the body upside down where the head and eye and ear and pituitary gland reflex points would be down in the heels of the feet. <laughs> this is an example of if the chart looked like that, it would be an illegitimate chart. In addition to showing the soles of the foot in legitimate foot reflexology charts, you should also not have identical mirrored organ reflex points from one foot to the other. And that's because the spleen organ in your body, in your abdominal cavity, that tends to be more to the left side of your abdominal cavity. It, it wouldn't be considered in the middle and it's definitely not on the right side of your abdominal ca cavity unless you have situs inversus where your organs are reversed. Also, organs like the gallbladder would be considered to be more on the right-hand side of your abdominal cavity as well. So when you have your soles of the foot depicted in your legitimate foot reflexology charts, you should also be able to see the different reflex points at different areas of the left and right foot. They're never going to match identically unless you have a bilateral organ, such as your lungs or your kidneys or your adrenals, then those reflex points can match. Another common characteristic of a legitimate foot reflexology chart is where the spine is depicted as reflex points. And what I'm showing you in this chart right here is the depiction of the spine, your vertebral spinal reflex points. They're on the medial portion of the foot. If you ever had a reflexology chart that showed the vertebral spinal cord in the middle of the foot or on the lateral side of the foot, that would be an example of a illegitimate chart. Think about where the spine is in your body. Your vertebral spine runs down the middle of your back, right? Well, that's how it should be reflected for the reflex points in your feet. It should be down the middle of your two feet joined together. So it'll be the most medial portion of your two feet on the left and right foot. Now the heart reflex point is a great point to talk about when there might not be similarities, but what's commonly accepted among reflexologists. I'm showing two different reflexology charts here, and I've circled with bold red ink the heart reflex point on both charts. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see a large blue depicted reflex point for the heart on the left foot. 
But if you look at the reflex chart that's on the right hand side of your screen, has a longer, more narrow circle oval around the reflex uh, point for the heart, you'll see that the heart is depicted on both the left and the right foot with that red heart oblong. Okay, it's on the medial foot on the left and right and it's the heart reflex point is larger on the left foot because it's thought that our heart is a little bit more to the left side than center of our body. So I want to share with you that both of these depictions are correct and accurate and commonly accepted. And I know that might not make sense, but we're going to discuss charts a little later. There are some times that you're going to find charts with organs in slightly different places with slightly different presentations. This is just an example of a chart where you didn't have identical organ depictions. That's okay. It, it is commonly accepted. It's okay to have the heart represented on the left foot only. And it's also commonly accepted to have the heart depicted on both feet. What would not be acceptable is to have the heart only depicted on the right foot. Okay, so this is an example of some more common characteristics that are not necessarily identical from chart to chart, but th these two examples are commonly accepted as accurate. I'm going to give you a third variation for the heart reflex point with another acceptable chart. This chart right here has no heart reflex point. <laughs> so in addition to charts being accepted of the heart on the left hand side or the heart on both sides, if the heart's not depicted at all, that does not make the reflexology chart illegitimate. Okay, sometimes organs simply are not depicted on a chart. It doesn't mean that the reflex point doesn't exist. That's not true at all. It just simply means that whoever created the chart didn't want to add that reflex point. And some people are more, um, they prefer to work different points over others. Another commonly not non-placed reflex point would be the appendix. You're going to see very few foot reflexology charts that depict an append appendix organ reflex point. Okay, so and that's commonly accepted. Sometimes you will have an appendix reflex point on your reflexology chart. Most of the times you will not. And unfortunately, it takes many years of practice and reviewing many charts before you start seeing and viewing uh, what is more commonly accepted. Of course, taking courses like this and learning, having an instructor show you helps you validify a chart. Um, but these common characteristics, when you look at dozens and dozens of charts, you're going to start seeing this overlaying and, and layering of, of similarities. And not all reflex points will be depicted. Sometimes they'll be depicted slightly differently. But what's not acceptable is when the reflex point doesn't even match what would be considered part of a map of the human body. And while we're talking about the heart reflex point, I think it's important to share with you a chart where the heart is depicted in an area that wouldn't be accepted. If you look at number eight on this chart, you'll see the gray oval that's represented in the right foot. Remember the client is lying down in the supinated position and you're looking up the feet. So their right foot would be on your left hand side. And on the left hand side of your screen in the in the right foot of this depiction, you can see the number eight clearly labeled as being on the outside of the right foot. This is an example of a chart that's not commonly accepted because the heart is simply de depicted in a place that it normally would not be. I don't know anyone. I have had one situs inversus client in my career. 
I saw her in the 90s. It was really cool. Her organs are reversed, and uh, it's like one in 100,000 uh, people that are born with their organs uh, reversed. But even if the organs are reversed with the situs and versus, your heart is still going to be more towards the middle of the body. It's not going to be on the outside right-hand side of your body. So this is an example of a chart that would not be commonly accepted because of just there's a heart here, but there's several other organs I'll review later. The heart is just depicted in an absolute erroneous place. More common characteristics of foot reflexology charts and what makes one acceptable is the passing of the colon from one foot to another. If you look at the chart on the left hand side, you'll see the colon is depicted in orange and it's kind of circling and surrounding the red small intestine on the lower third of the foot. And that kind of maps the body and where it might also be located when you're following a map of the body for um, the sole of the foot reflexology point depictions. If you look at the chart on the right hand side, we that's a um, that's from the CE Institute chart. And you'll notice the ascending colon is traveling up the left foot. The transverse colon uh, passes from the right to the left foot and the ascending colon is on the right foot. We have it a little bit more detailed. Okay, sometimes the colon might just be a, a straight line from one foot to the other and that's acceptable. Sometimes it will be depicted such as it is here in the orange and in the CE Institute chart where it's more of a circle or a like almost a, a square box circling around the intestines. Those are also commonly depicted for your colon. But if you find a chart that has the colon exclusively on one side of the foot and does not pass to the other foot, then that would not be a commonly accepted foot reflexology chart. Another commonly accepted reflex area for foot reflexology charts are the reproductive organs are usually found near the heels of the feet and around the ankles. Okay, so it's like the bottom portion of the foot. If you ever saw ovaries or uterus or testes up near the ball of the foot or the, the toes, that simply would not be considered a common char characteristic or a legitimate foot reflexology chart. Almost all foot reflexology charts depict the solar plexus in the same area. Think about where the solar plexus is in your body. It's almost in the middle of your body. Right? So it's kind of the same with a foot reflexology chart. We often see the solar plexus reflex point depicted about one third to halfway down the foot and about one third in from the medial foot to halfway. Anywhere in that geographic area would be a commonly accepted placement of the solar reflex point in foot reflexology. So that's just a very small portion of our home study reflexology training for the feet and explaining the different commonly accepted positions of foot reflexology points. If you'd like to learn more, we do hope you visit us at the school at ceinstitute.com. We do have self-paced training that's available immediately after you register. We'll send you an email and you can access that training 24 Four, seven until your course access expires. We also teach hand and ear reflexology here at the school as well. So we hope you enjoyed that and are inspired to take some more training with us. And until we see you in a class, be safe.